Zero Trust Network Access, or ZTNA, is a category of technologies that provide secure, remote access to application and services. Unlike VPNs, ZTNA provides secure access on a per-application basis, automatically setting up and tearing down tunnels as necessary. But to understand ZTNA, it's important to know the model and frameworks it's based off of. You see, ZTNA is a component or subgroup of the Zero Trust Security model. This model provides a philosophy on how we should approach network security. This foundation is important in understanding the components and methodologies in how we accomplish ZTNA. In this video, we'll take a look at the Zero Trust Security model and the foundations it's based on. We'll also take a deep dive into Zero Trust Network Access and look at the pillars and components that make up this architecture. Lastly, we'll take a look at some practical examples on how this is being used in the real world and the vendors who are accomplishing it. To understand ZTNA, we first need to understand the Zero Trust Security model. This model or framework adheres to the philosophy that no one outside or inside the network is to be trusted unless their identification has been thoroughly checked. The assumption is that anyone can be compromised, so it doesn't matter if you're on the same network or across a globe, everyone must be verified. In other words, access to application and resources are not accepted based on location. In fact, location is irrelevant. This means that users inside and outside the network are not to be trusted by default. Simply put, traditional IT network security trusts anyone inside a network once they've been verified. In the zero trust security model, trust is never assumed by default. Instead, users, regardless of location, are to be verified and given only the minimum amount of access that they need. This means that a user request to application A will be verified and authorized only for that specific application. Access to other applications will not be granted on the notion that they've been verified once before. Instead, each application and service is verified independently. Verification is accomplished in different ways depending on the implementation, but at a minimum, it includes the following three pillars, identity, context, and security posture. Identity involves user identification, authentication, and authorization. In other words, who are you? Are you who you claim to be? And are you authorized for that resource? Identification of said user should typically include a second or multi-factor authentication. Context is about how the user is trying to access the resource. This pillar is based on the least privileged security model where users are only granted the least possible amount of access that they need. In Zero Trust, this concept is actually taken a bit further where applications are hidden from the user without proper access. Only users who are authorized for a particular resource will even see that the application is available. The last pillar in verification is security posture. This third pillar focuses on the device the user is connecting in on. If you verified who you say you are and you should be allowed access to the resource, the next question is, is your machine secure? Security posture may encompass several different checks on the user machine to make sure that the device is compliant. This could be as simple as verifying that a software like antivirus is running, or this could be extended to make sure that several different conditions are met before granting access. An important thing to know is that Zero Trust never stops on just the verification. Once a user has been granted access, Zero Trust requires continuous monitoring and validation. Any changes to the identity, context, or security posture will be reevaluated and revoked as necessary. Zero Trust Security is a model and a mindset about how to approach network security. However, it's not a technology. Zero Trust Network Access is a technology by which the principles of Zero Trust can be used to secure access to application and resources. The core piece of technology that enables the Zero Trust principles is called the Trust Broker. This piece of technology sits between the user and the application. The trust broker provides logical access boundaries and adheres to the principles of zero trust. This means that the trust broker is responsible for the verification of the identity, context, and security posture. Once verified, a connection is established per application between the user and the specific application the user is requesting. It will continue to monitor for changes to the identity, context, and security posture for the life cycle of the session. In practical terms, the trust broker can be a network device or a cloud provider depending on where the application sits and your implementation of Zero Trust Network Access. If your application and resources are accessed through SASE or SSE, the trust broker is the cloud provider itself. Example of these would include Zscaler, Palo Alto Prisma Access, Cato Networks, 
and Cloudflare to name a few. If your application and services are hosted on-premise, for example, in the data center or an HQ location, the trust broker could be a network equipment like a firewall. Example of these would include Fortinet, Palo Alto, Checkpoint, and of course, many others. The important thing to note here is that the trust broker is usually not a single device, but a decentralized solution of various technologies that make up the control and data plane. The control plane controls the management, intelligence, and monitoring of the ZTNA policies. The data plane handles the enforcement and usually sets up the connection between user and application. The makeup of a ZTNA will vary by vendor, so it's not as important to know the design as much as it is to know that the technology can handle the principles of zero trust one way or another. In fact, from a technology perspective, there's many different ways to accomplish ZTNA, and rarely is it achieved the same from vendor to vendor. In one of my previous videos, I described in detail how to accomplish zero trust security using SDP, or Software Defined Perimeter. And while SDP is one way, it's certainly not the only way. For more details on how SDP works, take a look at the video which was recommended by the Cybersecurity Cloud Alliance as a much watch for SDP in my previous releases. Let's wrap up by taking a quick look at how ZTNA all comes together. A user needs to access a corporate application and logs into their IDM solution using multi-factor authentication. The principles of Zero Trust provide the user with visibility only to the applications that they are specifically authorized for. When the user attempts to access the resource, the verification, context, and security posture of the user is verified to that application. If successful, the trust broker sets up a tunnel between the user and the application that they requested. Once connected, the verification process is continuously monitoring for any changes to the identity, context, or security posture. If the user needs to access a second application, the entire process is done again with a new verification process and tunnel establishing for the second application. Remember, with ZTNA, location is irrelevant. The user can be right next to the machine or a thousand miles away. As it implies, zero trust is about trusting no one but verifying everything. This wraps up another video from the CISO perspective, and I hope you found it informative. As always, please take a moment to hit like down below to give me a boost in the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe if you'd like to see more tech and cybersecurity related content. My name is Andy, and I hope to catch you on the next video.